Hello to all of you. Welcome to Logical NDE, where we publish tales of people's near-death encounters that they have shared with us. If this is your first visit to our videos, we would like to inform you that we produce videos that are aimed towards persons with inquiring minds who desire for knowledge about the afterlife. If you genuinely love stories such as these, kindly support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel so that you may stay up to date with all of our newest release entries, such as this one. As for our dedicated viewers, now seems to be the ideal time to unwind with a steaming cup of coffee and enjoy today's episode as we begin discussing the near-death experience recently shared with us by a resident of Canada, Ms. Rachel Tandon, who was 18 years old coping with the loss of her mother when she personally encountered this incident. My mother's death took place on June 18 of the year 2018. Even though everyone around me had time to mentally prepare for her demise due to her declining health, her passing nevertheless came to me as a bolt out of the blue. Being the only child and the closest to mom, the realization that she had departed permanently crushed me to pieces. My mother happened to be the only person who had been able to maintain our entire family and kept it alive while also overcoming the toughest circumstances that none of us could have ever imagined surviving without her. Her death came as a complete shocker to me and it took me forever to register that she was never returning back from where she had gone. That is when depression first crept up to my chest and took a permanent residence there. I was given treatment, but it didn't seem to help. My mother's passing had left such a colossal hole in my life that I had become emotionally numb. Even getting out of bed eventually became a difficult challenge because it seemed as though all my vigor had been stolen from me. The idea that I was alone in the world for as long as I were to live without mom's hands to cling onto threw me off balance. Unfortunately, over time, my mental health got worse. I had given in to all of my intuitive thoughts two months after my mother's death. I suffered a severe shift in my personality that made it difficult for me to even recognize myself, and as a consequence, I became quite suicidal. There were days where I would go on without eating or drinking at all, and it started taking up an extreme toll over my physical health. Due to the repeated nightmares of my mother's funeral playing out in my dreams, I eventually developed sleeplessness too. Throughout my life, I had developed the habit of staring at the stars because of what my mother said to me once about finding her in the sky if I was to ever lose her. On one such insomnia-ridden night, I was sitting at my room's window, reminiscing about mom and my talks from days before she passed away. At that exact moment, I heard a loud thud at my room's door. I went up to check who that was only to hear the same sound getting repeated several times but now it was coming from the staircase that led to the rooftop of our house. It was at around 2 in the morning in the frigid November that I followed the thuds and ended up at our roof. So many thoughts raced through my mind at that moment. I walked towards the railing and leaned down to see if I could find the source of the noise only to slip down without a warning. My father reportedly later returned to the spot to check how someone could trip down and have a fall from leaning onto the railing, but we never found out how that could be possible. As I started to fall to the ground, I was able to see the busy road I would soon be landing on. Though it only lasted a few seconds before I bashed my head on the concrete, when I realized this was the very end for me, I attempted to imagine how my mother could have felt when she passed away and how her experience might have been different from my own. After that the darkness descended, enveloping every aspect of my existence. I'm not sure how long this darkness persisted however, even as I still recall it now. All of the time that I spent in that moment I had the impression that time had stopped moving for me, and that the nothingness was about to consume me altogether. When I opened my eyes shortly afterward, I could feel my soul abandoning my body. I noticed my bleeding body was being examined by at least 20 people. I wasn't sure whether to be glad or depressed about dying, but I felt as though an elephant had just trampled me and was now lifting one of its feet off my chest, up until I felt myself moving quickly towards the sky in the thin air without the weight of a body. The sense of being weightless was thrilling. I had to strain my eyes to see where I was going because it was so bright at the time. As I got lifted completely above the Earth's atmosphere, I was brought to the stairs which were surrounded by people in white and black. It was hard to make out which ones were women and which ones were men. All of a sudden, I was shackled to the railing of the staircase a result of which I made countless hopeless attempts to restrain myself. I kept howling until I heard a voice behind me call out my name. The voice became closer, and I felt a sting in my throat. Mom, 
I had to force myself to turn around, and there she was, the most beautiful woman I had ever seen standing before me. I felt a tremendous sense of tranquility as I refused to sit there. My spirit was free of any lingering emotional voids from the earth. I was whole in every way. It was an amazing sensation. That there will be no tears or grief in heaven with my mother was undoubtedly a feature of this condition of being. It was a profoundly moving experience. Even as I remember it now, I vividly see my mother walking near me and taking the shackles off my feet and whispering that she won't be there to remove these shackles again, and that in order to truly set myself free, I had to break off the chains that I forcefully tied myself to. I kept staring at her while she spoke, and suddenly I saw thousands of angels singing and playing beautiful music in a circle. The very next minute when I opened my eyes, I found myself in a hospital bed alive. I am aware that in recent days there has been much discussion over the veracity of other heaven claims. I can still quite clearly recall what it was like in paradise. I think this experience taught me a lot of things in life. Most importantly, it gave me immense strength to finally move on in my life. This incident that took place nine months after my mother's death gave me every reason to breathe freely in my life. Every time I felt overwhelmed with life, I revisited the day I met my mother in the afterlife and the emotion was just very deep. It didn't truly have a beginning or an end. It was absolute serenity. I couldn't bring myself to turn back since it was so pleasant. For the first time, all the pain had vanished, which was really incredible. There was no longer any pain. There was no longer any worry. I simply felt amazing. Moreover, I witnessed an emotion of genuine love that I believed was embracing me. Since that day, my life has changed completely. I found a place to call home, and I yearn to go back there, so it gives me a new incentive to keep living contentedly and peacefully in hopes to return back to my mother. Rachel's narrative ends there. But what do you folks think about the lesson that death taught Rachel that changed her life? In the comment space below, offer your two cents. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and to share it with others who are interested in the near-death experience. For more, visit our channel. Until the next time, stay blessed.